Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program 2 video. And over the course of this one, I will be attempting to air launch this stock size Saturn V and maybe send it to a few distant destinations. And once again, we are going to be starting in the vehicle assembly building, working on the Saturn V that I will be air launching. I'm not going to be showing the build of the aircraft, unfortunately. And I know there were a lot of people who said in the last video that I sped it up a little bit too much, so this is slow right down. However, if you would like to go to the launches of this, skip ahead to 2 minutes and 26 seconds because that's when I will be all done within the vehicle assembly building. But I am currently working on the Apollo CSM module using all of the stock parts. I am not blessed with things like RO and all of the lovely parts that come along with those in Kerbal Space Program 2 yet. No, I have to use stock parts to make this. And overall, I thought the Apollo Saturn 5 that I did create for this video turned out to be somewhat okay. However, I am sure there are people that have done a much better recreation of this vehicle because this was me spending not an awful amount of time in the vehicle assembly actually working on it. And if you are one of those people, why not send me some pictures down on my Discord? There is a link in the description of this video if you do want to go and check it out. Anyway, I was messing around with the S4B stage a little bit there to make it look a little bit longer. The stock decoupler wasn't really long enough so I cheesed it a little bit with a fairing to make it ever so slightly longer and make it look more akin to the in real life Saturn V. But the S4B, the S2 have been completed somewhat and now I'm going to be working on the S1C, the big boy at the bottom with the five F1 engines or well in my case I'm going to be using five mainsails which they look a little bit weird now. I know it was the Mastodon from Kerbal Space Program 1 making history that was the equivalent of the F1 engine in that game and we have now lost that which is a little bit sad but there we go it is pretty much done all I need to add to it now is a few small tail fins on the bottom of this rocket to provide some sort of aerodynamic stability and the entire craft will be finished and I can strap it onto a bloody ridiculous sized plane and hope and pray that the Kraken doesn't enjoy this thing for its breakfast which is a very real possibility anyway we are now at the launches and and the first one was not very successful in the slightest. The wings were not big enough, so I went away and created a plane that had wings almost as wide as the runway to try and provide a little bit more lift. Yes, this was not able to get off the ground, at least the first iteration was not able to get off the ground at all. This second iteration, which had wide wings, absolutely wide wings, was able to take off at about 150 meters per second, but I did rely on the mainsails on the back of this to actually get the sort of speed that was needed to take off, using only four of the biggest jet engines, but I could take off. And as you saw just then, well, yeah, the first release of the Saturn V was not as planned and it went crashing into the ocean just off the coast of the Kerbal Space Center. So let's try that again. This time, rather than four jet engines, I have eight and that makes it a little bit nicer to fly. Although you may notice in the top left, I am getting two frames per second whilst flying this because jet engines are terrible. For some reason in KSP2 right now, there goes another Saturn V into the ocean. And here goes another one. Anyway, yes, jet engines in Kerbal Space Program 2 right now. The more you add, the exponential the lag gets. They are absolutely terrible. I have now got 16 of them on, and for some reason I'm getting four frames per second, so I don't know why that's improved. But yeah, it's really, really bad. Ideally, I would like to be able to do this without the rocket-assisted takeoff, but the fact that the jets are just so, so friggin' laggy, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. I'm not sure if I would have the sanity. I think I would actually go insane. It might make my brain melt trying to play Kerbal Space Program 2 at sub one frame per second. Yeah, I feel like maybe 20 engines, 20 of those biggest jet engines might be enough to get away without using a rocket assisted takeoff. But yeah, as mentioned, that would make me go personally crazy and I would rather not do that. But this was somewhat of a successful launch. We can see that we did manage to get the Saturn V off of the plane and there were a few tricks that I had to do in order to achieve this. One of them being making sure that the Saturn V on top was the root part. So I didn't 
actually have to switch over to it in flight. However, the flight profile of this was less than ideal and I didn't really gain anywhere near the altitude that I would need in order for the S2 stage to actually get to orbit. So I lost a little bit of control and yes, that was a failure. Okay, here comes the triumphant music, and that means that you know that this time this is going to work. Or will it? Only I know for the moment. But yes, this is the successful version of this flight that can actually make it to orbit, even if we are taking off at a rather wonky angle. Essentially, the wheels on this plane cannot turn. They do not go round and round. No, they do not. So when it started tilting to the left on the runway, I just decided to say screw it we're going i don't care i have built this i have strut everything together i'm fairly sure this is the one that will work and this time it actually did and i fired up the f1s or the mainsails on the saturn 5 a little bit before i released it which will be right now and you can see i also added a few solid boosters on that plane to try and decouple it because one thing that i was noticing that was happening is that plane was running into a few problems where it would bump into the Saturn V and cause that to roll a little bit out of control and really change its pitch. So I decided, yeah, let's clear that plane. Get it out of the way as soon as possible. And then that way I don't have to worry about the Saturn V getting knocked all over the place, which is exactly what happened here. It did get a little bit knocked, but I was able to point it rather straight up quite quickly on, which meant this time round I did get the altitude. I could get the altitude that the S4B wouldn't go spinning out of control as soon as I released it from the S1C stage, which was fantastic. And you can see we are now in space at 96 kilometers and I'm just using the S4B stage to finalize my orbits around Kerbin, which has now been achieved. Okay, brilliant. I made it to orbit with an air launch rocket and I haven't actually mentioned it yet in this video, but there is currently a weekly challenge to air launch a rocket and then there are some additional harder ones too. The first of which, go to the moon with your air launched rocket and attempt a landing. So that is exactly what I am doing right now. I am plotting out my maneuver to the moon using the maneuver node controller mod. Yes, it is a brilliant mod that can now let you skip orbit something that should have been in stock Kerbal Space Program 2 but wasn't. And with that handy feature, I was able to get a nice close flyby of the moon. I am going to be doing an updated mod video which will hopefully come out tomorrow so make sure that you do check that if I do manage to get it done in time I'm not sure if I will yet but that is my intent but I do have a very busy day ahead of me yes and other things have happened as well which I won't delve into but yes I've, I've been a very 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 busy boy indeed Anyway, we are at the moon and we are now attempting to come down onto the surface. Yes, we are going to be landing with the S4B stage because there are reasons, there, there are absolutely reasons why I want to keep all of this intact as long as possible, which I will discuss as soon as we have completed the landing, which we are coming down to now. And we are on the surface for about half a second. I take off because we are bending over in a rather awkward position. And then, yeah, that sounded wrong. And then we come down again, but it is just as bad. So I decide, you know what? Screw this. I do not want to get this stuck on the surface of the moon. We're just going to go. That counts as a landing, right? We touched down softly on the surface. And unfortunately, I did use all of the fuel on the S4B stage. So we had to use the CSM to finalize our orbit around the moon. Okay, so the reason why I wanted to keep the Saturn V as intact as I could for as long as possible is because the second part of the challenge was to air launch a rocket and send it to Juna to land on it. So I thought, well, the Saturn V is quite big. Maybe I can do a trip to the moon and Juna in the same mission. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing or at least attempting. We have now made a burn to send us into planetary. I haven't gone for Juna exactly yet. What I'm going to do is right now plot out my maneuver whilst I am in interplanetary space. That way it was just a little bit easier getting from the moon out to interplanetary rather than getting a direct encounter with Juna and waiting for Juna to be in the correct position. You know, all of that kind of rubbish. I mean, it would be more efficient if I would have done it that way, but screw efficiency. I have more than enough Delta V on this to actually make my way over 
drive to Juna. And because Juna has a nice thing called an atmosphere, it means that I can use that to air a brake and hopefully slow down and not be flung out into interstellar space using some sort of weird gravity assist. No, I, I don't think Juna is big enough to allow you to go out to interstellar space. If you do that at Jewel, absolutely, because Jewel is a freaking chonk. It's massive. It's huge. It will give you so much extra speed if you come at it from the right angle. But Juna is just a tiny little small planet. It's much smaller than Kerbin, so I doubt we could really gain those sorts of speeds. Anyway, whilst I've been nattering on about that, you can see that we have actually made an encounter with Juna. A 16 kilometer encounter above the surface, which being someone that has never really used aero braking before, <gasps> shock gasp, Karnasa doesn't use something that would help him out. I know it's crazy. I've, I've never really done it before at all. Not even in RSS, RO, any sort of KSP game that I've played. This is the first time I've really done it. But yes, as someone that has never done that, I did not realise that 16 kilometres around Juno was a little bit too low, and I was going to be capturing on my first pass of that planet, which is less than ideal for the sole reason that, yeah, it's dark. I can't see a thing, and this is going to make for absolutely thrilling YouTube viewing. I have done the impossible. I have made a Juna landing look incredibly dull and boring because it's dark. Well, hopefully you don't think that. Well, you can see we have deployed the parachutes and we are safely down on the surface of Juna. However, the parachutes decided not to cut. Even though we're moving 0 0.0 meters per second, I had to go and create an action group to do that and now I was unable to time warp faster than physical warp. So I thought, yeah, let's get the Kerbal out. Let's get Valentina Kerman out and see if I can time warp with her. And I couldn't to begin with, but look, suddenly I can time warp and the craft disappeared. So Valentina is stuck on the surface of Juna. Guess it's time to call the Blunderbirds? So parts one, two, and three of the challenge have now been completed, but there is a fourth, a Val level achievement to try and earn, and that is to take off from the surface of Lathe and return to Kerbin. And I thought, what better to do than use the Saturn V launcher and try and get it to Lathe? But I was running into a few problems with this plan. As you can see, I tried to return to the space center there, and it kept me in the vehicle assembly building. Now I tried to launch it and I am still in the vehicle assembly building but for some reason the vehicle has launched even though nothing is going on. This is a new bug that I have encountered and this was a little bit strange so I tried to revert the launch and the entire game crashed. Yes this is not going well. Now I should say this vehicle that I'm using right now to launch the Saturn V and the fully fueled chonk plane into orbit is only going to be able to get to low curb in orbit. I had a plan where I would launch three separate vessels, the Saturn V with the plane attached, because obviously I need that all strutted together. Otherwise, when I attempt to take it off from Lathe, it's going to flop like, well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to say more on that subject. Use your imagination, which is why I wanted that all in one launch. Anyway, the second launch was going to be a ginormous fuel tank that I dock to the Saturn V and the plane in orbit. And then the third and final one would be the engines that would send it over to Jewel and Lathe. But I was really struggling even getting the first part to space. However, my attempts were incredibly hilarious. As you can see on the screen right now, I am going to be showcasing some of the more funny attempts to actually try and get this to orbit. Right, so you see right now, it's going down. All of the engines have fired up, but yet it still went down. Now that was really concerning considering my thrust to weight ratio should have been 1.7. This had more than enough thrust to weight to go up, yet no matter what I tried, when I got this to a somewhat stable state, where the entire rocket wouldn't just flop and flip and destroy itself, it wouldn't go up. It just wouldn't go. Not that I've ever had that problem before. No, no, we're not. No, no, we're not going there. Yes, I was quite unsure as to why this wasn't working. Why my rocket could not get to space today. I mean, it's not even upside down. Maybe 
for the moment, this mission might just be impossible. I mean, air launching a Saturn V from Lathe, when you get rockets over 200 parts in the game right now, and they decide to freeze and break, and the Kraken is omnipresent and ever, ever angry, I think that may have been slightly too ambitious. So I went away to try and work on a little bit of a smaller design, you know? Something that I could actually get over to Lathe that didn't weigh 1,000 tons when it arrived at Jewel. And I didn't really actually have the time to finish this over the course of this week. I said earlier on that I've been busy. I had unfortunately had a few issues crop up over the course of this week. One where I ended up in hospital, which, yeah, wasn't very fun. It really wasn't a great time. I would have loved to have spent more time on this video to release on Friday, which is also why I'm not entirely sure how things are going to be for the mod video tomorrow. I've just been a bit unwell and hopefully I can somewhat recover relatively soon. Just thought I'd throw this in at the end of the video because I was personally somewhat a little bit sad that I didn't manage to complete the Val tier of this challenge. But as always, I will be working on new videos and hopefully that mod video will come out tomorrow. Who knows? Big thanks to Mr. Blue Star, Pentium, So Not the Hero Type, That Unreal Guy, Zaretya, and the rest of my patrons and members for their continued support. I have been Karnasa, like and subscribe for more, and I will see you later.